or actually anyone on the call here can share what they know about stress because I know that we all have it otherwise we'd be dead you know <laughs> you have to have some amount of stress but when it becomes overpowering um, yeah that's when we get out of control we want to try and prevent it or um, maintain our, our sanity if you will and I just really wanted to put in this so you're gonna get this handout that I'm sharing so you don't have to take notes or anything like that but you know you'll get this handout and any kind of an essential oil that was listed um, that is listed in this presentation. I also pulled off the product information um, sheet, so you'll have a copy of those as well for the blends and the single oils. And I just kind of wanted to talk about David Hill just for a minute, just because I don't know the level of everybody on the call, whether you've um, been in doTERRA a long time, if your brand's banking new, but I think David Hill's doing some really great work you know, with his special expertise on essential oils. And through doTERRA, he's helping us, the wellness advocates, um, bring this lovely product, all of them. They're all my friends. I feel like I'm sharing my friends, and I feel like I have to talk about every single oil, but I can't because I have to narrow it down. But really, for any kind of stress, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, there's an oil for that. That's what it, That should be like my tagline. There's an oil for that. But he's basically the key advocate for integration of essential oils into mainstream medical settings also known as our homes. So I just like, I just wanted to tout him. So doTERRA, it was founded in 20, 2008, and what doTERRA means is gift of the earth. And I just think that that's very cool, the, the, the word doTERRA, so I like to bring that up. And then here's my disclaimer. Everything in this presentation is from doTERRA's information. So I took information from my cell phone, honestly, on that Modern Essentials you know, app, so I would just looked up stress and I stole a lot of information that I've kind of consolidated into this presentation for you here today. But I also took it from the emotions book and I don't even know if I have the most current, but I wanted you guys to know about this from Aroma Tools if you don't. And then there's a really cool article in the Living Magazine about stress, so I took stuff from there. And I know I don't have the most current version of Modern Essentials, but this still works. It just doesn't have some of the oils in there. And so I just wanted to share where I got all of my information and give credit where credit is due, as well as just say that the FDA hasn't you know, said, yes, Tracy, you can talk about all this stuff and everything you're saying cures disease, because it doesn't. It, none of that is true. So that's what this is. It's just for education and for us to share. And then you, know, you guys can do your own research, but if you clicked on the research, you'd basically just go to the doTERRA site, which you all already have access to, I'm sure. And so there's three met methods of using essential oil. Aromatic, which is breathing in the mist or the aroma of an essential oil. And you know, I always thought I had to like put it in my hands and sniff it and stuff like that. I never even thought about carrying around the bottle and just taking a whiff, you know? And so right now I am stressed because I'm giving a talk. And so I am smelling lavender for my stress level. I am drinking lavender for my stress level, but it's all good. I'm just playing, it's really fun. And then you can also put it on topically and you can take it internally. And I think you guys know this, and so please forgive me if this is elementary, but I just wanted to make sure everybody, you know, is covered. So, stress. Stress is the body's response to difficult, pressured, or worry, worrisome circumstances. It can, be, it can cause physical and emotional tension. Syst sorry. Symptoms of stress include headaches, muscle soreness, fatigue, insomnia, nervousness, anxiety, and irritability. And so I, I wanted to make a word art thing, so it was really fun. So when I went through all the research, um, the, the, the herbs or the essential oils that were the primary recommended ones are what's inside this little word art thing, so it was kind of fun. And we're gonna go through them here in a second, so I'll just sk skip on down. I and love I'll that heart so much. Isn't that fun? I love it. I think it. it's called wordart.com. You just tell what words you want, and then you can make them certain colors. I like that lavender's lavender. <laughs> I love it. It's so That's awesome. Fun. Thank you. I liked it, too. It was really fun. So this is what I got. Recommended essential oils for the care of stress. So the primary recommendations are lavender. Well, I'm going to just talk about lavender a little bit. And I just found this out, so that's why I started drinking it. Lavender, when you take it internally, it reduces anxious feelings and promotes peaceful sleep. 
So it's also a really nice idea to just put it on your bedding at night, like on your pillows or on your feet for a really restful sleep. The next one is in tune, and I probably should have, woulda, coulda put a registered trademark after the word in tune. But in tune is one of our blends. It's the focus blend. And it, it helps you stay on task or when you're feeling tired in the mid afternoon, you can just put some on your wrists and inhale deeply. It provides clarity. Um, it just helps you stay on task. And sometimes that can be stressful if you're at work or you're at home and you're trying to get dinner done, get the children to bed, you know, take get them in the bath. You can just stay focused and just move through life a little bit easier. I'm telling you, I've been using Focus Blend every morning on the back of my neck. It's just like, all right, I'm just gonna get stuff done. So that's really working for me. Lemon uh, is an uplifting aroma and it promotes a positive mood. And lemon can also just relax you. If your children are really kind of hyper or this or that, if you just kind of diffuse some lemon, it just kind of smooths them down and it just makes you feel good. And obviously any citrus, will uplift you and make your mood feel better. Ylang Ylang, lifts mood while having a calming effect when diffused. That is awesome, I didn't even know that. So now, you know, doing this, putting this together for you guys has really been awesome because now I can manage my stress a lot better because now I know which oils to really pull for, pull out when I'm really stressed. Cause I, you know, everybody's stressed, but lately it's been a little bit more stressful than normal. But Ylang Ylang, and all these things that I'm sharing with you, I took from, so you got the presentation, but you're also going to get this packet of like the single oils and then the blends, and they're just in alphabetical order. So the information that I'm sharing with you now, which are just kind of like cliff notes, are from our product information pages. So I just wanted you to know the source of that. Um, bergamot, I say bergamot, I don't know if you guys say bergamot, but I say bergamot thinking it's French, um, is calming and soothing aroma. You can, it's used in massage therapy for calming benefits. And you can diffuse it in a classroom or at work when stress levels or tension is high. And it's really nice to put on your feet before bedtime. So that's a really nice one. And you guys, if you want to, if there's any questions or anything that you want to interject in between, this is very casual, so please feel free to, to do that. Just unmute yourself and shout it out, whatever you want. Same with you, Miss Jenna, if you know good things to share here. All right, Pettigrain. The next one is Pettigrain, may promote restful sleep. If you take it internally, it can ease feelings of tension and it helps to calm the nervous system. So that's a nice one. I don't have that one yet. I've smelled it before. I think it's like an orange fragrance. So I just wanted to comment um, on the Pettigrain. Um, and now that I'm unmuting myself, now I'm getting stuck in... I'm questioning myself if it's pedigree. Um, give me one second. I just want to look something up really quick. Um, I have the, the sheet in front of me. Does it say, is that the one that they say is like the men's lavender? Oh, men's lavender. Does it say anything about that on there? Or is that spikenard? Uh, that might be spikenard, which is coming up. Um, no, it says that it is from Paraguay and it is, um, hold on. Pettigrain is distilled from the leaves and twigs of the tree. Neroli essential oil is distilled from the blossoms and bitter orange oil is produced by cold pressing the rinds of the fruits. It's used in the perfume industry, giving body sprays, fragrances, lotions, and colognes a fresh herbaceous note that is popular among both women and men. So I don't know about the lavender and the man thing. Um, it says before going to bed, add a few drops of pedigrain along with lavender or bergamot to pillows and bedding for its aromatic effects. So then what, are you gonna talk about spikenard? Oh, yeah. over on the other side. Um, yeah, I am. So Pettigrain and Spikenard, they're two of our newest oils. They just came out this past September, about a year ago. And um, when we get to Spikenard, I can confirm what I'm about to say, but I believe it's Pettigrain where Dr. Hill says it is just as powerful and efficient as frankincense. Oh, wow. So he says that it should definitely be used with similar um, properties that you would use frankincense for. 
and I've had some major, major digestive issues for the entire month of June. And I had posted on another Facebook page and this healer, and I think she's a nurse practitioner by trade. Um, she said to use pedigree sparingly because it's so potent. She actually said um, to use it about once or twice a month and not more than that because it is so potent. Um, actually, I just remembered where I read it. Um, let me pull it up. It does suggest to use a carrier oil with it because of skin sensitivities. Yeah, I mean, I put it right on my, is this your third eye right here? On your, in between yeah. your, that's yep. where I put it, um, which is where this woman, it also supports the immune system and the nervous system. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be an amazing, amazing oil. And honestly, um, I have hardly used it. I think that was the first time I opened it when this woman suggested it. Um, because I just, you know, I was desperate for something to help my digestive issues. And she hmm. spoke very highly of it. And so I found it to just be pretty fascinating that they compare it to frankincense. Um, and also the fact that it is so potent, you only want to use it sparingly. And she said that it is incredible, incredible for emotional issues. Um, whereas my digestive issues had to relate to my liver. Um, from an emotional standpoint, it wasn't like I had like a liver disease, but my liver was basically overworked and exhausted from too much stress, too much anxiety, too much overwhelm, too much fear. In Chinese medicine, your liver and your gallbladder, those are your two organs that holds all of those emotions. And I just found that mind blowing that she said, um, you know, to use it sparingly and that it would help those issues. So, and now that I'm saying it, it I am wrong. It's spikenard. <laughs> I but found the really good oil all of that is in regards to spikenard, <laughs> not frankincense. Pedigrain is the men's version of lavender because it's a little bit more masculine, but it still has the similar properties of lavender. Um, and so a lot of people aren't that into the smell of lavender, so they could actually benefit from pedigrain. Yeah. When we get to spikenard, I'll read you the post. Of yeah, that sounds great. Said. And then I also wanted to just comment, um, Intune is awesome for children as well, especially if they're hyperactive kids. I've had a lot of great support with some of my friends and clients that I work with on using Intune instead of ADHD medicine or ADD medicine. You know, their children are, you know, between five and 10 and the doctors have wanted to put them on medicine and, you know, the parents wanted to find an alternative. So Intune was great for that. I also use it often. Um, and then just some of the citrus oils, lemon, bergamot, we're going to get into elevation next and then grapefruit. Um, those oils, just be very cautious of when you're using them topically because they are photosensitive. So right now while we're out in the sun, hiking, swimming, camping, just be careful when you're using those oils topically. They're very photosensitive. Um, so you'll only want to use them in the diffuser internally if they're allowed to be used for internal use or, you know, putting them topically where you're not going to be exposed to sun for about 12 hours. But wow. um, I just wanted to chime in and remind everybody on that. Thank you. Okay. Well, joyful blend is next. That's elevation and that elevates your mood. Um, I, you can put it in your bath after a really stressful day. You can diffuse it. You can wear it as a fragrance. It just increases a positive mood and feelings of confidence. So that's lovely. That's very nice. I remember um, a couple Christmases ago after I had my marriage expired or whatever, I was feeling kind of blue and I was by myself and I thought, all right, I'm just going to try some elevation. 
minutes, it took the edge off and I felt happy. I felt so much better. It wasn't lonely and it wasn't kind of like going down. It really works. It really, you know, and I don't know, does anyone else have any stories about elevation and how they love to use it? I think it smells awesome. I wear it as perfume almost on a daily basis. That oil and balance were the second two oils that I bought after getting my kit six years ago. And I still use both of them on a daily basis. And elevation is such a pure, uplifting smell to me. It's absolutely divine. It is nice, yes. Um, relaxing blend, serenity. I use that every night. I use that if I'm really stressed at work, I will diffuse it. Um, serenity, it promotes relaxation and restful sleeping. Um, it lessens tensions and calms emotions. And I think it smells really nice. It has vanilla in it. Um, yeah, it's lovely. I, I put it on my feet every night or I diffuse it or I do both. And when I was going through a really stressful time in Colorado at my job and I was thinking of leaving it and things, I seriously lived um, with serenity. At war I wore it for fragrance. I put it on at night. If I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about things, I'd put it back on and I would just set, send me right back to sleep. So I, those are my favorites, like you said, balance and um, serenity for me. Grapefruit, another uplifting uh, citrus um, oil. It uplifts your mood and it increases your motivation while trying to lose weight. I like that one. And I think, I don't know, somebody can correct me here, Jenna, but I think if you put it on your body, that it helps break up cellulite. I could be making that up, but I think that's a really good use of it as well. <laughs> it definitely, definitely does. Um, I think it's actually one of the oils in the Slim and Sassy blend too, because it helps tighten that, I can never say the word, elasticity, I think. Yep. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's really good for cellulite and circulation wow. and stabilizing your metabolism while uplifting your mood and energy levels as well. Yeah. I think it really increases your metabolism. That's probably why it's in Slim and Sassy. So then over to the secondary recommendations, um, Aroma Touch is our massage blend and it's comforting and relaxing and it helps to lessen tension and it smells really great. And it's in our Aroma Touch you know, dropping the oils along the spine, and it's just wonderful for creating homeostasis and balance. Roman Camom, do you want to say anything about that, Jenna? Okay. Roman Tracy, I have a, um, Tracy and Jenna, I have a question. This is Tammy. Hi. So I have um, the peace and um, cheer, and I'm wondering what the difference between elevation and serenity, they seem very similar to me, but in the way that you're talking, but do you know the, the main difference? Mm. Elevation is uplifting and relaxing blend is kind of like a um, calming you down. That's, that's my hit on the two. So yeah, I would go off of that for sure. <laughs> that's a good question, Tammy. You know, a lot of the oils will definitely twine intertwine together because they all kind of have similar benefits, but what works really well for you, Tammy, might work a little bit different for me. It might work a little bit different for Tracy, but the Joyful Blend is definitely going to be very uplifting, very energizing, um, very joyful, boosting your emotions, whereas that would compare similar to Cheer. And I don't have my oils in the office with me at the moment, so I don't know exactly what the difference is in the two blends. Um, but they are going to be very similar. Whereas peace and serenity, those two are going to be a little more similar as well. Like Tracy said, serenity is going to be very calming, very relaxing, very soothing. Excuse me. Whereas um, peace to me is like a liquid Xanax and sleeping pill. So those <laughs> two kind of go together. Um, for me, at least they're very calming. They're very, supportive of my anxiety, my stress levels, feeling very overwhelmed. Whereas joyful and sheer, it's just more of like a ray of sunshine. You know, you smell them and it just perks you up. You feel really good. You feel very refreshed, very rejuvenated. Um, and I use peace sometimes throughout the day. You know, if I'm feeling anxious or overwhelmed, I'll still use peace and it's not like it's going to knock me out and put me to bed. Whereas serenity, honestly, I haven't used in a long time because for me, the vanilla is a little overwhelming. Um, 
but they have just redone the blend. They have come out with a new Serenity blend, which all of you new users probably have the new blend. Um, so I am excited. I just got the new blend with the BOGO, so I'm excited to kind of test that one out. But we use it in Parker's room every night to help him sleep. So that one can definitely, you know, provide you a little more of a relaxing sedative use, if you will. Yep. But, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, the point is, is that we do want every oil in our home, even though they do provide very similar um, qualities and benefits, because they all work so different. You know, you kind of have to find what works for you. And, you know, Tammy, you have a family of five, and you may work really well with serenity, whereas Hannah may do better off with peace at night. So, you know, that's not like a perfect remedy for everybody with natural solutions. And then when you get your hand out, you'll see that cheer is fresh, spicy, and warm. And it promotes feelings of optimism, cheerfulness, and happiness. And it counteracts negative emotions of feeling down, blue, or low. But elevation is um, described as floral, sweet, and citrus. And its primary benefits is that it elevates mood and increases vitality. It's energizing and refreshing aroma, and it promotes a revitalizing environment. So they do kind of have different oils in them. Um, wild orange is in cheer, whereas tangerine is in elevation. So they are a little bit different. One's floral and sweet, the elevation, and then spicy and warm is the cheer. So if you're choosing between one or the other, that might help you make a decision. Okay, yes, ladies, that was really helpful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Uh, geranium. Love geranium. Um, it smells like rose. It's like my poor man's rose oil, if you will. But if you diffuse it, it gives you a calming effect. And it has many other properties as well. But I, it's uplifting for me. But I like floral fragrances for me. Being an adrenal type, I burn out easy with stress. Um, I teach a class called Creative Wellness. And um, certain glandular vulnerabilities or personality types do better with florals, some do better with spices, and some do better with vines and succulents. I'm an adrenal type, I do really well with these florals, and so that's kind of like a go-to for me is geranium. It's very strong, but um, I don't care. I like it. I can walk around being a diffuser. It's okay with me. <laughs> But geranium, the geranium is also the women's oil. Um, it's very, very good for women's heart, and it's very good to provide confidence for women. So if you're using geranium, you know, I think that can help lower those stress levels. But it's also very good for women's skin as well. So, you know, a lot of us who are prone to stress, we can have, you know, some adult acne or some skin blemishes. Um, so geranium helps that as well because you know it's all related and we all deal with stress in different ways some of us overeat some of us over drink some of us you know have skin conditions some of us have stomach issues i mean we all relate to stress in different ways and i think that's a big component too is finding an oil that's not only going to help balance your stress but the side effects that is causing that is being caused by the stress too um, so I definitely think geranium's awesome as well. Yeah. And do you want to talk about spikenard? I mean, all I was going to say is that it's uplifting. It promotes feelings of calmness and relaxation, and it's very grounding. And I think that this is one of the oils that was used in biblical times when they washed their feet. The spikenard, it's pretty sacred, holy oil. Yeah. So I apologize for my confusion. They are two new oils that I'm kind of just getting into, um, so I apologize that I got that mixed up, but so she said, um, frankincense is, a, or excuse me, spikenard is a lot like frankincense. It can be used for pretty much anything except for pregnancy. It does have a pretty disgusting smell. <laughs> Smells like leaves. <laughs> it's pretty strong. So um, diffusing it with other oils such as balance or any other woods oils or citrus oils smells really good with cedar wood and wild orange. She said it's the oil of gratitude and appreciation. It will help you start to view things as God does. 
you see all the doors open. It increases faith and possibilities and to check your attitude. It's very strong, not to be used every day. And I was wrong on the month too. It's once a week on your third eye, which is right here between your two eyebrows. Um, it's recognized for sacredness and it's far reaching spiritual, emotional, and physical effects. Um, what else did she say? I think that's pretty much all that she said. So yeah, Dr. Hill speaks very, very highly of it. It is still a very new oil, so I don't think there's like a lot of hype around it quite yet. Um, I got it cause I got, um, the convention kit from last year. And when you buy the convention kit, you get all the new products that they're introducing. And, um, those were the two new oils that came out. So, you know, from what I understand, it is very sacred and, um, I've used it twice, I think, since I found out about this, um, at the end of June. Beginning That's cool that you say that about your third eye because it says here it's traditionally used to anoint people of high honor and in the Ayurvedic health practices of India. So you got to you anoint yourself. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think it might have. I don't know how to say it well. Sesquiterpenes. Sesquiterpenes. It, it crosses the blood brain barrier, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why it's similar to frankincense. Um, yeah, smells good. <laughs> Grounding blend, balance. I love balance. I use balance every day. I put it on my feet when I get out of the shower with my um, fractionated coconut oil just to have it be time released and soften my skin. Balance, uh, it's a whole body relaxation. It eases anxious feelings and it evokes feelings of tranquility and balance. And it smells lovely. It's got the blue tansy in it. I love it. And then when in doubt, use frankincense, right? Frankincense is just about for anything, but it promotes feelings of relaxation, supports the nervous system, and it's really great to put on the bottom of your feet, again, with the uh, coconut, I can't talk right now, what is it called? Fractionated coconut oil to diffuse it, and it will help balance your mood. So frankincense is awesome. The other recommendation was the lonely marjoram all by itself, but um, it produces calming properties. Um, it has a positive effect on the nervous system when taken internally. And they suggested that, you know, if you have a fussy child, you can put it on their feet prior to a nap and you can apply it to the back of your neck to lessen feelings of stress. And again, they're stressing taking that internally for that. All right. So... The whole rest of this presentation, let me see if I can go down, is um, in similar, like if it's red, that's a primary recommendation. This is essential oils by specific categories of stress. And I believe this is what I got out of the, the Living Magazine. Um, but I thought it was interesting to share it like this, and I thought it would be fun to be like a match game, you know, and go, okay, well, I have chemical stress, I have mental stress and physical, so what's in common? Okay, maybe geranium or bergamot or whatever. So I just wanted to put them in categories. We've talked about many of these and there's many more to talk about, um, but I didn't want to take up too much of your time, but you'll have this as a reference that you could research it. I Unless love this chart. This is such a great reference. I love how you have it outlined by all the different type of stresses and what to go to to use for it. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And then below here is the key again, the red, the blue, and the purple is the other recommendation. So that'll be great for you guys to use. Oh, and then I, um, let's see, why is this acting this way? Let me use this. I don't have my mouse, so let me do this. Um, this was also from my, um, the Modern Essentials iPhone app, but they talked about if you have stress due to tiredness or insomnia, I gave you some ideas of what to do, like 15 drops of clary sage. And I didn't even know that clary sage was a relaxing oil. I was just drawn to use it in my bath. And I, you know, put it in the um, Epsom salt and put it in the water. Anyway, it's really good for stress. So clary sage, sage makes sense for 15 drops, 10 drops of lemon and five drops of lavender to two tablespoons of fractionated coconut oil. And you just massage it onto the skin. So that's an idea. And what was interesting to me, the diffuse into the air, 
again, it was too simple for me to say, oh yeah, I can just have my own diffuser and just sniff the bottle, you know, inhale it directly. So that's easy. Um, you can apply it to your hands and, you know, inhale and wear it as perfume or cologne. But I just added this. It's like, duh, if you're going to diffuse it, add it to your diffuser. <laughs> and you can do three to six drops. You can do as many drops as light or as strong as you want. But I added that from what they had on the, the app. And then, you know, they didn't really give us any examples, but I, I just think that you guys can choose what you like as long as you research it and make sure it's good on your skin, you know, and just add it to oil and massage it and put it in, you know, Epsom salts into the bath and put it on the back of your neck or your feet. You guys have, you guys are creative. You know what to do, I believe. But again, here's my thing, you know, whoops, sorry. Refer to the handouts for any cautions with skin. I just wanted you to do that. Um, and then I think of stress release with relief with intuition. I mean, go with what your body wants. Go with what you know is good for you. I personally think stress can be simply defined as an unmet need, you know, and that could be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. So go for what you have. But these are recommended things that if you have diarrhea, constipation, anxiety, because a lot of these things are physical from stress. You know, it gives us examples of what to use, depression, et cetera. So I just wanted to spell all this out, and I don't want to take up all of our time to go through it, but we certainly could. Anger, you know, relaxing blend, lavender, grounding, all of that. And then emotions, we all have that lovely aromatherapy system. So if you just want to focus on the emotional system, I just kind of took snapshots of what each of these oils do. And I realized one day I had the whole kit, but I never used cheer. And I'm like, what the heck? Let me try the cheer. And I just loved it. It made me feel so good. So I was like, now I'm almost out of my little bottle <laughs> for using it so much. Um, motivate. I love every one of these. Every one of these. Passion, inspiring, forgive is renewing blend. And then it goes on to, you want to say something, Jenna, about these three or four? I just think the emotion oils are so awesome. And, you know, when you were bringing up earlier to answer Tammy's question about um, the ingredients. Yeah. Um, there's an awesome pinwheel or pie chart or whatever you, I think it's called a pinwheel. And I posted it on the Facebook page. No one's on Facebook. Um, we can definitely get that to you. But it breaks it down by each emotional oil based on it being spicy, herbal, floral, um, mm -hmm. woodsy, woodsy, you know, it breaks it down. So you can truly find which, um, which blend you kind of feel drawn to. I have the kit, um, in the roller balls, which are already diluted, which is awesome, especially, when you have two-year-olds meltdowns um, <laughs> or I have the regular kit, which, you know, I found myself using peace and console and none of the other ones because they were a little spicy. So I, you know, I'd put them on my body and I'd feel very warm. Um, so I definitely think that they're best for the diffuser only in my opinion, unless you are going to dilute them. But out of the kit, I kept going just to the peace and console, peace and console. That's all I went to. And I would order them probably once a month or once every other month. And it's just recently where I've kind of started to dive into the others. And, you know, the passion one was, I think the oil of the month or 10% off in February. And so I decided to buy it, um, as the roller ball. And I love it. I love, love, love the passion one. The cheer and motivate are awesome. The forgive is still the one that I haven't really had too much exposure with. And it's probably one that I need because, you know, I definitely have some things that I need to forgive and just move on. And I know that's hard for a lot of people. And so that's probably why I've kind of been, you know, pulled away yeah. from it a little bit. But what you said about your liver. It does smell good, the fresh woody aroma, but look at the paragraph under forgive. It says it right there. Help counteract emotions of anger and guilt while promoting liberating feelings of contentment, relief, and patience. <laughs> Just saying, you might want to get it. <laughs> totally. No, yeah, I have it and it sits. I don't even think it's, oh, actually, I think I've opened it to smell it. And 
Um, but the pinwheel is awesome. It's, it's a really great reference on which oils to use based on, you know, the scent or which emotion. So it has each scent outlined. Um, I don't have it with me. It's out in the kitchen. Um, each scent is outlined with, um, you know, the scent as well as, um, the ingredients and the emotions. So. Jenna, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I have the cheer and um, I something in the ingredients really bothers me. And so I thought, you know, I was trying to rub it on your feet for two weeks because maybe it's something that I need if I don't like the smell. But like, I'm glad that you mentioned that because then I'm not looking at all oils just the same. Um, yeah, I guess that's, I don't, I don't know how to say it all fancy, but just that there's something in the cheer that, that bothers my senses, some smell, some ingredient in there. So that's going to help me maybe look at something else that does the same thing, but has a different ingredient. Yeah. I mean, have you tried using it for the full two weeks on your feet? I'm not there yet, but every day I'm, I'm using it, but I'm not at the two weeks yet well you could also try um and diluting it a little bit you know when you apply it to your feet you could also put a little bit of coconut oil or olive oil on there um to see you know if that helps kind of tone it down a little bit that's a good point um most of you guys have attended one of my classes some of you guys have not but if there's a smell that you don't really like it's actually a sign that your body needs it so they do say to put it on the bottom of your feet every day for two weeks because it's far enough away from your nose that it's not like abrasive and in your face smelling it. But when you put oils on the bottom of your feet, your body's absorbing the oils within 30 seconds. So it's still going through your bloodstream, doing what it needs your body to do. So you actually are benefiting it. So that's why Tammy's bringing that up is because we've had that conversation where you know, it's really important to put an oil on the bottom of your feet and, you know, hopefully it will go in and do what it needs to do. But if not, Tammy, you know, the oils make wonderful gifts, <laughs> you know, you can gift it to somebody and you could try, you know, one of the other oils that we've mentioned tonight in replace of cheer if it's just something that's not going to work for you. Yeah. And the kids, the kids like that one more. So I am trying the two week um, test and, um, but the kids like to use that one. Awesome. And Jenna, this is Linda. Hey, how do you know how many drops of oil to put on your feet when you do it? So one drop of oil can service every cell in your body. So you don't need a lot. Um, I love the oils so much and I always tend to overuse, I think. Um, so I would definitely, you know, start with like one or two drops on each foot and see how you feel if you're targeting something very specific, like a headache or a stomach ache or, you know, whatever it is, start with one or two drops. And if you're not finding relief after, you know, a couple hours, then add another drop or two. Um, or sometimes maybe that drop of oil isn't the specific blend that you're needing at that time. So you could look in your book to see what else it suggests and you could try something different. Okay. I wanted to ask one other thing um, of the list of oils that you guys were going through just now. Um, say for stress or anxiety, there's say eight oils. You, you pick one and see if it works for you. You don't use all eight, right? You don't need to use all eight, but I do have a couple roller balls for my stress and anxiety where I've put five or eight or 10 <coughs> oils in there. Um, oh, okay. Just okay. because I felt drawn to them. And, um, you know, I kind of just, I wanted to attack that damn anxiety that is so paralyzing sometimes. And so for me, I just, you know, there's no right or wrong way with the oils, you know, um, they do say less is more. So, you know, always remember just to start on the lesser side. Um, but they're not saying when they give you a recipe or like, you know, the chart that you had where it's the primary, secondary and um, the 
I forgot what the third well, option Well, they see it on the screen. They would suggest to use lavender first. They do it in priority in the- Okay, so, so that is, this is Linda, sorry, Tracy. Um, okay. So you start with the top one and then work down or like Jenna says, you could mix lavender with focus and lemon. I'm a lemon person anyway, so. so but, use that, um, you know, use what you like. This is just suggestions. Yeah, they're definitely just suggestions and they do list them as primary, secondary, and other recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, based on effectiveness, but I've also been told that they do it because as you're new to your oil use and your journey with oils, you're not going to have all the oils in your collection. So it's also based on like, you know, primary, secondary, and other recommendations is, you know, they're going to suggest lavender first, but maybe you don't have lavender. Maybe you only have geranium or maybe you only have marjoram. So they're also recommendations based on your oil collection. They give you several different things that you can choose from until you have all the oils in your collection and you really know what truly is going to work for you. Okay, and thanks. That helps. I also want to just say use your intuition. Yeah, definitely. I always go to what I feel drawn to. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, one time I was teaching a class and this lady – was talking about anxiety and I was listing off different things for her to try. And there was definitely a very bitter woman at this class. And she's like, so you're telling her to buy 10 different oils. And what if all 10 of them don't work? Then what does she do? She's stuck with 10 oils that don't work. And I was just like, okay, lady, come on. Like, clearly you need a lot of these oils. <laughs> but the thing is, is yeah, you do buy some of the oils and maybe it's not the right oil for that specific ailment. But then you look it up in the book and there's like 20 other things that that oil is good for. So it doesn't mean that your money is wasted. It doesn't mean that the oil is going to go bad and never use. You just find another way to use it. I mean, lemon, lavender, and peppermint, there's 101 uses just for those three oils. So if somebody was to buy lemon for their anxiety and it wasn't the right one, it doesn't mean that they throw their hands up and, oh my gosh, I spent money on this oil and it's not going to work guess what? You have so many other uses that you get to use that lemon for. And it's the same with all the oils. I mean, you look up these oils in your book and very few of them have one or two uses. Most of them have at least 10 and some of them have, you know, 20 or 30, except for the lavender, lemon, and peppermint, which have 101. So they're very, very versatile and can be used for so many different things. Agreed. Well, we're really going over. I apologize, but I think we're all stressed out so we can use our oils and feel better. No, you're good. <laughs> the blends to diffuse the stress. I definitely got this table out of the summer living magazine. And so, you know, whatever you, it was, it was on a um, wedding planning guide. And I just thought, Oh, look at that. Diffuse the stress. I'm going to type that out for everybody. So whatever you want, you know, if you want to calm and uplift coriander, I never would have thought of coriander. So that's also in the handout. You can look up all the properties or look it up in your book or your iPhone app or whatever. So were these like blends that they said to use or were these just suggestions? These are just suggestions. I basically plagiarized um, what they had and I actually underlined a lot of the things in here for essential oils, but it's basically just this table right here at the bottom and it's called that blends to diffuse the stress. Awesome. That's good to yeah. know. Yeah. And you all can buy, if you aren't receiving the living magazine, um, you all can buy it in your back office. I think it's like a dollar fifty or something, but you should all be getting one at some point. Oh, and then, you know, I mentioned the other source is the, um, aroma tools book, emotions and essential oils. This is such an awesome book. I think it is so a great again, book. I just stole it from their book and put it, I, you know, I gave them credit. But, you know, Aroma Touch is great, the oil of relaxation, and they give you suggestions of how to use it. The Restful Blend, which is Serenity. Um, yeah, the oil of forgiveness. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I just realized that because I think I have forgiveness issues. <laughs> so I need to use it a little more, even though I do. Ylang Ylang, the oil of the inner child. I love that. That's just really sweet. And then the oil of renewal. Basil. Basil was one I didn't even think of before, but that was new. So I also included that in this little packet. So anything that's in this presentation um, was taken from all of our resources with doTERRA and I just happened to pull it all together and put it in one thing, then hopefully it's a nice reference for you to use going forward. 
Yeah, no, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And um, that's all I have, really, unless there's anything else anyone would like to go dive deep into and talk about. You know, what I didn't put in here, which is so silly, and I just looked over at them, duh. You know, when you want, for my, from my expertise with stress management and prevention, the two things that work the best are nutrition and exercise. So speaking of nutrition, we have these um, LRP, you know, our vitamins. I highly think we should use these vitamins. This is, uh, you know, Jen, I can't talk about them. Vitality complex, food nutrient complex, and the omega complex. These things keep me going. They just keep me going. I know you use it twice a day, Jen. I just use it at night. It works great for me, as well as the Terrazyme and the PB Assist, and I'm out of the, what is it, GX? All of those internal products that that will so serve our stress levels if we nutri you know give our body the nutrients that it needs and then hydrate organic food as pot most as, as often as possible you know steam don't fry you know all of those natural things that we should do for ourselves anyway as we're wellness advocates we have to walk our talk right yeah absolutely and you know we're an essential oil company and the vitamins are our number one selling product and for me i saw a lot of my stress and anxiety levels really start to go away when i started the vitamins i mean they are absolutely amazing for everything um even if you eat an all organic clean diet you still can absorb the amount of vitamins and minerals that you need to and the vitamins are definitely life-changing um Carla, Claire's best friend, Misha, um, she's been taking the vitamins. She just started taking them in June, and she just ordered her second box. She's a CrossFit girl, and she, works, she lives in Los Alamos. She works in Santa Fe, so she goes to the gym after work before driving back home, so she has a long day, and she said she was getting to CrossFit feeling so drained, so tired, not having the energy. She started taking the um, lifelong vitality vitamins. She said she's never had as much energy as she's had in the one month. And she said she didn't even change her diet. She said she's also gained weight, which is what she had been trying and striving to do for about six months and she couldn't gain any weight. She was like, these vitamins have changed my life. And I mean, it's just one story after another where you hear about the vitamins and the Terrazyme, you know, I can't speak more highly of the probiotics I definitely take. Um, and I think it's true. I mean, hydrating your body and eating correctly really helps manage your stress and anxiety levels for sure. Um, I wanted to also share um, this app do you mind stop sharing your screen, Tracy? Not at all. Hold on, let's see if I can. Do I do new share, maybe? Oh, stop share, sorry. Got it, the stop share. So um, this is called um, the Daily App, which I think I've talked about on here before. It's a free app from doTERRA, and it looks just like, um, it's the one up in the, I don't know if you guys can see that, the one up in the upper left corner with the drop with an O in it. That's awesome. And I definitely encourage everybody to download this app. It's free. So when you're on the app, this is your home screen. Up here in the right-hand corner, you have like your menu option. If you drop that down, there's a thing that says determine, well, first of all, there's one called daily drop. So every day it sends you a new one or two minute video on different oils. But my favorite part is you can hit determine your mood and then it pulls up this chart where it has all your different moods and emotions. So you could do like discourage and you move it all the way to the right or to the middle, wherever you feel it is. You could do lonelies just a little bit. You could do bored way to the far right. You could do tense. Then you scroll down to the very bottom and hit show results. And then it pulls up a screen that tells you which oils to use. I did so, download it. It's awesome. It's another great tool to help, you know, balance our stress and emotions because stress, weight, and diet are the three things that 
Americans uh, or I'm sorry, stress, weight, and sleep are the three things that most Americans deal with and struggle with. So that app is a great tool to use, especially when you're on the go and you don't have your modern essentials book with you and you're just kind of feeling a little run down or overwhelmed or emotional or hormonal, whatever it is, it's a great tool to use. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions or want to share any stories or testimonials or <laughs> have anything to comment on? I think your CrossFit woman could use in tune because it says you use it in the mid afternoon when you're tired. <laughs> I would tell her. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I think yeah. she got it in her kit. Actually, I'll have to remind her of that. <laughs> Nobody wants to share anything. Everybody's stress free. <laughs> I'll, share, I'll share about the vitamins. And so a similar thing has happened to me is that I haven't been using them for very long at all. And I started using them at first. I was skeptical because I thought, well, I take vitamins, you know, vitamin is a vitamin is a vitamin. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I tried them out and before, and I hate to admit this, but my husband would have to help out with kids bedtime because I literally like had no energy whatsoever. I was so cranky. I couldn't help out reading kids, um, even books. And since taking the vitamins, I'm like awake. I'm very awake right now, which is a miracle. And this has been years where I have like just been so tired in the afternoon and I even tried drinking coffee, started drinking coffee to help. Um, and the vitamins have made a huge difference for me. Awesome. That's so awesome, Tammy. And how long have you been using them? You signed up, what, in June? June. So I started using them, like... Right before you went away for the 4th of July, right? So just yeah, not right, even a month yet. Yeah, like, like, beginning of July, like July 1st, maybe, I started using them every day. And sometimes I forget to take them you know, three, four times a day. So even taking them two times a day faithfully has made that big of a difference for me. And yeah. my husband has noticed it. My family has noticed it. So that's just in three weeks. That's amazing. Yes. Wow. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Tammy. And, you know, I always feel like when you're taking them, you feel really good and you maybe don't notice it's when you stop taking them, you know, there's days where, you know, I'll go like a Saturday and Sunday and Monday and forget to take them. Or if you're on vacation, you know, you forget to take them. And I notice a big difference just from not taking them for a couple of days. I'm like, God, what's different? Oh yeah. I didn't take my vitamins, you know? And that's so awesome that with just such short time and that's a big testimonial. I mean, especially for your family to notice it. That's awesome. Anybody else? No? All right. Well, um, next class uh, or next call will be August 7th, which will be going over the August offers and um, loyalty rewards. Um, I want to say thank you so much for Tracy. That was an awesome presentation. And we will go ahead and email that out as well as posting it on the files on our Facebook page. So everybody has reference to it. Um, and I will post the recording of this call as well for those who could not join us. Um, Christina said, thank you, ladies. Of course, our pleasure. And I hope everybody had a good week of BOGOs. Um, for those of you who aren't on Facebook, if you have any questions about the BOGOs, let me know. I'm happy to go over them with you. I will be jumping on live tomorrow on Facebook pretty quickly, just, you know, about half hour, 20 minutes to run through the BOGOs, um, just to give everybody, you know, a little rundown on what they're used for and how to use them. Um, from a team standpoint, the BOGOs brought in an extra about $5,000 worth of volume just in that one week. They were an awesome. I've been with doTERRA for six years, and I think it was one of the best BOGO weeks I've personally ever seen. And um, all their offers were just 
absolutely amazing. I mean, they've never given balance away ever, especially a full bottle. Um, you know, every now and then it's a promo of the month, um, or a product of the month, but they only give away the small one. So this week was some awesome, awesome BOGOs. And I'm really excited for all of you guys who got to participate in them. And, um, so ne the next call will be August 7th loyalty rewards and August offers. And then after that, um, August 21st will be babies, kids, and back to school essentials. So that will be a good one for all you, um, moms and grandparents who have little ones that are going to be headed back to school. So thank you guys for joining. I hope you have a great week um, and have a great night. Thank Thanks, you, Jenna. Tracy and Jenna. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.